Hi, I'm Ryan Rice. And I'm Alex Hanna from the Washington State University Department of Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about some of the safety rules that you need to follow any time you're inside one of our labs. Most of what we're going to cover is in this document, our lab safety contract, which you'll sign a copy of before you begin your experiments. Now we're not going to cover every single thing on this list, more like hit some of the highlights. However, you're still responsible for all the information, so please make sure to read it completely before you sign it. One of the first things on the contract has to do with food and drink. The rule here is pretty simple. You can't eat or drink anything when you're in the lab room. In fact, you can't even have a water bottle or any other drink container out in the lab room at all. If you have one on the side of your backpack, get it out of sight before you enter your lab. Now that's not to say you can't eat or drink at all during your lab time. If you get hungry or thirsty, just wash your hands and then come out here in the hallway to have your food or drink. No one will bother you if you have them out here. Now let's talk about housekeeping. You want to keep your workspace clean and free of junk. This includes the floor space around you. Keep your backpacks either under the bench or somewhere off to the side. If there's hooks for backpacks in the room, please use them. If you don't, somebody's likely to come along and trip on them. And if they're carrying glassware filled with chemicals when they trip, things can get messy fast. Moving on, you may notice there are no MP3 players allowed in lab. You also can't call or text people or use headphones or earbuds while you're in lab. For one thing, they'll distract you in a place you don't want to be distracted in. If you do need to use your phone to look something up, don't hold it with a gloved hand. You're going to be working with chemicals in these labs, and if you handle your phone with gloves that have chemicals on them, you'll end up transferring them from your phone to your face. And believe me, you don't want that to happen. And please don't leave your phone on the bench top or it could get spilled on. Moving on to personal protective equipment. This begins with your lab coat, which everyone will need no matter which course they're in. The rest of your clothing has to cover every part of your body except for your hands and your head. This means you can't wear capris, shorts, or anything that may leave any part of your legs or ankles exposed. You also have to be wearing shoes that cover your entire foot, not just your toes. If your shoes leave the top of your foot or your heel exposed, they're not okay for lab. And if you don't show up to lab with the right shoes on, well, you could be this guy. If you're not able to run home to get shoes, our stockroom has bowling shoes that you can borrow, and we've got them in all different sizes. Along with the proper clothing, you also have to keep a pair of goggles on whenever you're in lab. Now these have to be goggles and not safety glasses. This is because if you're splashed from the top or sides, goggles will protect your eyes, but glasses won't. Now when I say you have to keep your goggles on at all times, I mean even if you're done experimenting and cleaning up. Some of the glassware you're going to be working with is a little bit tricky, and if you're not careful it might do this and get chemicals up into your face. Another reason to keep your goggles on at all times is if the person across from you gets careless, they might splash you with whatever they're working with. That kind of thing is unfortunate, but if you've got your goggles on when it happens, at least your eyes will be okay. If you need to wear gloves, you'll find whatever size you need in every single lab room. One of the most important things to remember about these is, you can't wear them out in the hallways. If you're wondering why not, consider this. Let's say you're working with something nasty and you get it on your gloves. Then your TA asks you to get more paper towels or something from the stockroom. So naturally, you head out of the lab room, down the hall, stop at the stockroom, and head back. All along the way, anything you touch with your gloved hand will get contaminated. And if someone else comes along and touches it, they're going to get it on their hands, and they won't be happy with you. Believe it or not, there is a right way to remove your gloves that will help you keep anything that's on them off of you. When you go to take your gloves off, first pinch one of them somewhere around the wrist or at the base of your hand and peel it off like this, turning it inside out as you go. Then ball it up and hold on to it with your still gloved hand. Next, scoop under the glove you're still wearing with your thumb or a finger and peel the glove off again, turning it inside out as you go. This way you're always touching the inside of the glove, never the outside. The nifty part is, if you do this right, you'll package the first glove inside of the second. One more thing. Long hair in a lab can be a serious hazard, so make sure you tie it up with a hair tie so that it doesn't get in a beaker with solution in it or maybe even a burner with a flame. Now we're on to handling chemicals. Whenever you use a chemical, check its label to make sure it's really the one you want to use. Some of the reagents you might be given are similar looking to others and are easy to mix up. 
When you're done getting the reagent you need or putting waste in the waste container, make sure to get the cap back on the bottle and screw it down. Some of the compounds you're going to be working with take on water from the air if they don't have the cap to stop this. If you leave them this way, the other people in your class won't be able to use them because they'll get ruined. Another reason to keep the cap on tight is if anyone comes by and grabs the bottle by its cap and that cap is loose, bad things can happen. And it's not just bad manners to leave them uncapped. You can also lose points for this as well. If you take some reagent and you find you took too much, don't put the leftovers back in the container you got them from. Just put them in the waste container. Once you take a reagent from its bottle, it can become contaminated, and if you put it back, you'll contaminate the rest. And your lab mates won't be happy with you when their experiment doesn't work because of it. Finally, make sure to use caution when handling your reagents. Some of these are caustic, meaning they can do things like this. Wear gloves when you're handling potentially harmful reagents, like concentrated sulfuric acid. Now it's time to talk about equipment. Before you use your glassware, give each piece a quick check to make sure it doesn't have any cracks or nicks taken out of it. If one of them does, there's a good chance it will break right when you least suspect it. If you do break a piece of glassware, make sure to tell the people around you first so they can watch out while you get your TA's attention. Sweep up the pieces with a dustpan and put them in the glass waste containers, never in the trash. And don't pick up the pieces with your fingers. There's too much of a chance that you could get cut if you do. These waste containers are not just for broken glass. They're also where you'll discard your disposable Pasteur pipettes, even if they're not broken. Again, you don't want to put anything made of glass in the trash. Some of your experiments will involve hot plates. When you go to move these around, make sure to grab them by their base and not the top. If somebody else was just using the plate at your station, it may still be hot from using it. And if you touch the top, you're going to burn yourself. When you're done using your hot plate, make sure you turn it off and unplug it at the end of the day. If you don't, you may get a point penalty on your lab report. But you're not going to let that happen to you because you're going to leave your hot plate off and unplugged. When you're done with your experiments, you need to make sure your workspace and all of the glassware in it is cleaned up. This means that you've disposed of all of your waste in the proper waste container, scrubbed and rinsed your glassware with the eye water, and put all of your equipment back where it belongs. To help you keep track of your glassware, most of our lab rooms have these placemats in the drawers that tell you what should be in them. Please make sure to line up everything right where it should be before you leave. If you need a replacement piece of glassware, come here and get it. This is also where you'll go to get other supplies or to empty your lab room's waste container. And by the way, if you don't keep your drawer clean, there will be consequences. You see, at the beginning of each semester, we'll have you write your name on the front of your drawer alongside the day and time you're in the lab room. So if anyone finds dirty glassware at that drawer, we'll know just who'd done it and there may be points penalties. No one wants to have an accident or become injured, but if you are, your lab room has plenty of equipment in it that can help you deal with it. First time you're in your lab room, please take a minute to memorize where certain things are. The fire extinguisher, the safety showers, eye wash stations. You are definitely going to want to know where these are ahead of time in case you need to find them when your vision is impaired. A first aid kit and a chemical spill kit. So what do you do if you get a cut or a burn? Well, if you're cut, first let your TA know and they will help you deal with it appropriately. For small cuts, we have band-aids in the first aid kits we can give you free of charge. If you're burned by something like a hot plate, place the affected area under cool running water for at least 10 minutes or until the pain subsides. If you're burned by a chemical, again, get it under cool running water and hold it there for at least 15 minutes. If you get anything in your eyes, get yourself to an eye wash station right away. If you can't see, say something like, I got something in my eyes and I need to flush it out so that somebody nearby can help you. Conversely, if you hear somebody say they have something in their eyes, be a good neighbor and help them get to the eye wash. And finally, always notify your TA whenever you cut yourself or burn yourself or if you had to use the eye wash station. Besides helping you treat the problem, there's also some paperwork we'll need to fill out and they'll help you coordinate that stuff too. If you hear a fire alarm, turn off all the equipment you're working with and get out of the building. Do this calmly and orderly. Each door to your lab room has one of these evacuation maps attached to it that'll tell you the quickest way you can get out and where to go once you are out. Always use the stairs, not the elevator. Once you're out, either get behind Webster or Todd, depending on which side of the building you came out on. So that's your crash course in lab safety. Once again, make sure you read the whole safety contract as you'll be held all the rules on it.
If you don't follow the rules, you can lose points on your lab or even be asked to leave lab. If you have any questions about anything lab related, please contact your TA or the course instructor. Thank you.